Well, hello again from Kingston. If last week saw a landmark event, perhaps this week has a watermark event. If you want to know what I mean, keep watching. There have been a lot of questions over the months about just how the piles that supported temporary rests would be removed. When a new company on the scene, ODS Marine, arrived with two marine barges on Monday, it was pretty clear how things were going to go. A suspicion that the large blue trailer parked on the trestle bridge was going to remove them was quickly proved. As the marine crews settled in, and made their preparations. Any doubts were quickly set aside when iron workers, after appropriate preparation, began to cut the holes in the top of the piles that would allow attachment of cables for the lift. Although small in number, the dive team was clearly well equipped and very organized. Setting up adjacent to the first set of piles, their first action was to install an environmental curtain. It wasn't long then before the first diver was dressed and shrugging on his equipment. Once fully dressed and briefed, it wasn't long before he entered the water. With the dive flag displayed, it was then simply a waiting game while the diver conducted necessary cuts. Initially, cutting most of the pile so that when the time came to lift it only a small amount would remain to be removed. By the end of the first afternoon the shore team had a thumbs up returned indicating that all three piles were ready for the next day. Bright and early on Tuesday morning the dive boats were back in position and before long a diver entered the water to make the final cuts. His activities below the waterline were quite evident in smoke and bubbling at the surface. It seems that you can't go a week on the crossing without at least one day's rain. So it was no great surprise that, as the crane cables were attached, it was bucketing. There was a definite air of anticipation as the last cuts were made. As crews sheltered and watched more smoke rise, Everybody waited for the diver to signal release. And when the moment came, it was almost a surprise. But once it came clear, it was quite quickly lifted through the bridge and laid beside the trailer. The whole process was repeated several times during the week. And by week's end, about a quarter to a third of the total number of piles had been removed. Last week's landmark event was the installation of the last girders on the west side of the steel structure. On Tuesday, it was time for girders number 84 and 85 to complete the section. These are the last of the longest girders. The 10 that remain will be slightly shorter on the east side. And since we're talking about the East End, let's look at the changes that occurred this week on the East Abutment. On Tuesday, while everybody was watching the dive operations, 130 cubic metres of concrete were delivered to cast the main body. Looking beyond the abutment, Pier 21 had its concrete forms removed. That led to an amazing amount of work for the incredibly hard-working labourers as they removed surplus wood and prepared the forms for departure. And while we're in this area, we mustn't overlook the removal of gravel at the end of the week from around Pier 20. This marks the beginning of work that will return the east shoreline to its pre-existing position.
Looking up the slope, towards Highway 15, another excavator was very busy this week, unloading supplies which are building steadily in a sign that much work lies ahead on the East Roadway construction project. But it must be time to look west, where the green wall, west abutment, and the concrete roadway atop the girders are all growing very quickly. Later stages of the project also include a plan to ameliorate the waterline at the west side. Up on the main deck, the labourers of Local 183 have been doing extraordinary work in preparing all the wooden structures and fixtures. They also play a critical role in much of the support for the Gomaco machine, which had another run out on Section 3 this week. Operation demands a steady flow of ready to mix trucks from CBM concrete to feed the pumper from maple concrete pumping. It takes about 18 people in all to operate in and around the three stages of the Gamaco machine. You can see the screed of the main machine working in these two clips. We should never forget that it's the dedicated team from ABF, reinforcing steel, who make it possible for the Gomaco machine to run, and who were proud to display their sign once again this week. It was a thin week this week for wildlife, but we did have this tap dancing heron. and of course the ubiquitous Canada geese. Well, never a dull moment. Keep watching next week for uh, more news on the third crossing. Thank you very much for watching and please consider subscribing and if you already did, see if you can't get a friend to do so. Thanks again. Stay safe.